I started working at Healthy Habit, the place where you guys are at now. And uh, I did that for a couple years, learned all about health. And then as I got into my late 20s, my health crashed, actually. Uh, I gained probably 80 pounds. I didn't have much energy. Um, if I walked too much, I would get wicked insomnia. Insomnia, wa insomnia was really like my issue. And so I just went on this like massive health journey to figure out like what, what actually makes somebody healthy? What right. is health? What I learned was environment is destiny. Like mm. I should, I should get that tattooed on my arm or something to remind myself. Um, <laughs> and environment is destiny. So the environment you are in is how you will adapt and what you will become. And that is from the food you eat, uh, the people you hang around, the job you have, um, the light sources you get, where you sleep, how you sleep. Environment is destiny. Welcome back, folks, to the Healthy Habit Podcast. Today, we're talking with Mr. Lucas Trengov here for episode number 111, the triple ones here, 111 with Lucas mm. Trengov. I'm excited for this one. Uh, Lucas has been in the health industry for around 15 years. That's one five years. He had a successful podcast, which I was on, by the way, Humble you Brag were. there, the Quacks Podcast, formerly co-hosted with Brian, a good friend of ours here at Healthy Habit. Currently, yeah, he's man. a broker for some of the top brands in the natural channel in Arizona here. So he knows what's going on here with sales, product training, and health uh, experience with various different supplements and companies over the last decade plus. So I'm, uh, I'm grateful that Lucas came on. He's been helping us to schedule other guests over the years and various different trainings here for our staff and physicians here at Healthy Habit Medical Center. So Lucas, thanks for coming on for this one. Thanks, man. I'm uh, I'm happy to be here. I know we've tried to kind of set this up for yep. a long time, and so it's cool to finally do it. We'll do the next one in person, hopefully. Uh, so it was kind of yeah. short notice, and Lucas made it happen. So I'm grateful for that. So yeah, you got to get a couch. You got to get like a, a little right. a chill area and exactly. some mic set up, and we could we could hang out and just riff for right. a couple hours. Well, That'd we did fun. it in person on your podcast. I came there. We had he had a setup there at his place. So yeah. Yeah. It's definitely doable. So let's 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 start like this, Lucas. What led you into health? You know, how'd you get started on your journey? How, and what keeps you wanting to stay in the field of health? Yeah, good questions. Um, so I'm sure you have a lot of guests who come on and they'll talk about, you know, specific supplements and stuff like that. And and right. you know, you have companies and they I was hoping that we could talk more about like a general overview of environment and I've learned a lot of things in the last 15 years. So when I was in my 20s, uh, I did a lot of traveling. I went to India at one point, stayed there for a while. Um, I got super sick from food and, and water over there. And when I came back, I really wanted to figure out this health thing. Like I really wanted to understand my health. Um, I've been a type one diabetic since I was 12 years old. So health has always kind of been on my mind and what my body reacts to. Um, and so... I started working at Healthy Habit, the place where you guys are at now. And uh, I did that for a couple of years, learned all about health. And then as I got into my late 20s, my health crashed, actually. Uh, I gained probably 80 pounds. I didn't have much energy. Um, if I walked too much, I would get wicked insomnia. Insomnia, wa insomnia was really like my issue. And so I just went on this like massive health journey to figure out like what, what actually makes somebody healthy? What right. is health, you know, because I, I didn't know what being healthy was like uh, being healthy is actually something way different than what most people think it is. And so today I'm hoping to kind of give like a teaser a little bit so that later on when we can have a longer podcast, we can really dive into some of these subjects. Like most yes. people don't understand that feeling healthy is actually feeling nothing at all about your body. It's not feeling good. It's not feeling energetic. It's not feeling like you just drank a Red Bull and you're ready to climb a mountain. Right. Being healthy is actually just being neutral and being able to handle whatever comes your way. And so I didn't, I didn't, I wasn't able to do that for years. I was just like everything that came up that I, it was like, I always had to uh, partition my energy like really closely. And I always had to be careful, super, I was super sensitive to anything I ate. I had to be super careful. Um, 
And a lot of people are in this boat today, especially with the vaccines and COVID and all of these yeah. different environmental factors. I mean, I don't know if people know this, but there are thousands of new chemicals that we've introduced to our environment and we have no idea what they do to the human body. Yeah. And so there that are, are all banned these... that are banned in other countries. Yeah. 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 Banned in other countries. And, and so there's all these mystery diseases. And so a lot of people out there are just looking for health. They're just like, they're going into a health food store or they're going to different doctors, different naturopaths. And they're just like trying to figure out like, what's wrong with me. Okay. I'm, yes. I'm on, I'm doing uh, you know, keto and, 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 or no, 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 I'm doing fasting or, or now I'm getting into like, like hair mineral analysis or no, I'm doing blood work and I'm doing, you know, it's just like, what do you do? And over the years, I figured it out and, and I figured it out for me. And I think I have the tools that I could give people to figure it out for themselves. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. You, you were in India for how long? Uh, I stayed there, I think two or three months. I, wow. I lived at an ashram and, uh, meditated and, and was seeking enlightenment. I had no idea you went to India. That's phenomenal for several months. That's deep. Yeah. At that point you start even picking up on the language and learning the ins and outs of the culture and the foods and everything after, yeah. after that two, three week period, you know, I was in Ethiopia for six weeks in 2013. So similar, nice. similar story there. So what would you say, Lucas, then are some key factors environmentally that can impact our health? That's a whole new, uh, it's a big expanding area. One of the fastest growing areas in alternative medicine is environmental medicine, environmental yeah. health and the effects of EMFs on our health. It's, it's just new research is coming out every day in this field on environment and how it impacts our health. And whereas most people, like you said, they're focused on the keto and the intermittent fasting and taking this supplement and that, which are all great, but tell us more. Let's dive more into that environmental side. What are some key like big ones that we need to be mindful of. Maybe it's EMFs. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah. So what I learned was environment is destiny. Like mm. I should, I should get that tattooed on my arm or something to remind myself. Um, <laughs> and environment is destiny. So the environment you are in is how you will adapt and what you will become. And that is from the food you eat, uh, the people you hang around, the job you have, um, the light sources you get, where you sleep, how you sleep, environment is destiny. And I think what most people try and do is they're in a situation that's stressful and that's not good for them. And they try and use their willpower to overcome that situation. Um, and this includes people. This includes toxic people. This includes toxic workplaces. Uh, they get into it and they say, well, you know, this is bad, but I can, I can overcome this. I can, um, figure this out, or I can, I can do stuff to mitigate it. And there, there are things to mitigate stress. And a lot of the supplements that you talk about and that, um, I help sell in stores, they, they help mitigate stress. You know, ashwagandha yeah. is a great example. Like it's an awesome herb helps mitigate stress. Um, I've used ashwagandha in the past to, you know, very successfully. Um, but environment is destiny, which means eventually you will be worn down by your environment. Eventually your environment is going to win. Mm. And so the best place you can put your willpower is not in trying to fight your environment, but in trying to change the environment that you are in, or, you know, maybe that means moving. Maybe that means, um, getting new friends or confronting family members who are toxic or, um, changing your diet. Yeah. Now you mentioned EMF. That's one of the biggest ones right now. So most people, EMF is this insidious thing. The, 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 the crappy thing about EMF is if I took any person and I put them in a forest, you know, pristine environment, and I gave them a phone, an iPad with a Wi-Fi connection, and just, they, they were just on that iPad all day long you probably wouldn't notice much over the years. It's, it's an insidious toxin in yeah. that you don't notice much, but when you start getting stacked layer upon layer upon layer, it starts to add up. And what EMF does is it actually increases your metabolism. There was a great study that looked at um, the metabolism in the brain on the side of the head where a phone was and the side of the head where the phone was not. And what they found was on the side of the head where the phone was, calcium channels were affected and the metabolism increased on that side. And, and feel so free, real quick, feel free to share, do a screen share if you feel like doing that or pulling up studies throughout this. If you want to try, go ahead. Absolutely. Okay. Ahead. Yeah, I didn't I didn't put anything together. That's all right. But uh, Next yeah, time. We can, I can link it to you if you want to put it in the show notes okay. or something. Um, and so what EMF actually does is it's a stimulant. And so if you take a little bit of a stimulant, it's not a big deal. 
uh, like I said, the metabolism in that study on the, the side where your phone was, it increased. And so what happened to me was I was in an apartment and they installed, I think like 12 or 11 smart meters right behind my kitchen. And for the first couple of, I, I didn't know this had happened. And for the first few months, I felt good. I was like, man, I'm getting my to-do list done. I have more energy. I don't need as much sleep. I'm only sleeping like seven hours a night and I'm just mm. getting up ready to go. <laughs> like I was feeling good. And then I was sleeping six hours a night. Then I was sleeping five hours a night. Wow. And then I was starting to get bags under my eyes and going a little nuts. And then I couldn't sleep at all. And it was like, okay, I'm going to die and I'm going crazy. Yeah. And so this EMF thing, it's one of the most insidious toxins out there. And it's compounded by the fact that the telecommunication industries have put out studies that counteract any studies that talk about the harmful effects of EMF. So there's lots of studies that say, okay, this, these levels of EMF of microwave radiation, th these are toxic. And then there'll be a study that comes out on the telecommu uh, telecommunication side that says, we didn't find anything toxic. Right. And so EMF is, it's never been shown to be toxic, but it's in this weird limbo zone where it's like, well, the results of studies are inconclusive. And as long as they're inconclusive, we can keep putting up cell phone towers. We can pe keep raising the power on all of these devices and it just adds up. And so when people get exposed to this stimulant over and over and over again, all day long, when they're sleeping, their metabolism breaks down. It's like, have you ever seen somebody who was addicted to stimulants for 10 years and then quit? Like what happens for that 10, for that 10 years, they are skinny, they're burning fat, right. you know, they, they're, they got sunken cheeks and then they quit and they start gaining weight and they get tired, sluggish, you know, they, they basically destroy their metabolism. And so that's what EMF is doing to everybody in these areas with high EMF. It's just, it just slowly destroys your metabolism. This is why it's hard to lose weight. This is why it gets, well, this is why it gets harder and harder as the years go by to, to really be able to put in the effort to go exercise. Um, and so I like to think, you know, I've, I've, I've known about this EMF thing for oh, probably nine, eight, eight or nine years. And so mm -hmm. I've seen some people who have been exposed to high amounts of EMF and it's, it doesn't happen overnight. It's like, you know, over five years, they age seven or eight years. So it's just, it's, it's really subtle how it works. What can we do to protect ourselves right now on EMFs? And, and quickly, what is EMFs? You know, what are the sources of it? You mentioned a smart meter. I think you said when that yeah. was installed, but like, uh, obviously you and I are super nerds in this field and we go deep, but like for someone that's, I don't know, 75 years old and just on their computer at home now using the smartphone, what are EMFs? Where are they coming yeah. from and what can we do? So it's, it's tough to get, there's, there's a lot of different sources of EMF. I mean, there's Bluetooth, there's, there's all these different frequencies. Right. I mean, your microwave puts out a type of EMF, uh, there's magnetic, you know, fields and stuff. So I don't want to jump into like the super nerdy stuff, but just some things that people can do, you know, you can turn off your phone and your Wi-Fi router at night when you're sleeping. Um, if your house go outside, look around, if there's one of these big cell phone towers that looks like these kind of spiky things in the air and you see one by your house, like it might be a good idea to think about moving in Those the next things look years. horrible. Those things look like they just, don't, they just don't look good. And then they'll disguise them as palm trees. Have you seen that? Yeah. I know. I know. They try and pretty them up a little bit, but they do. They look all like almost like demonic or something. <laughs> right, like they're like right, trying right. to grab the sky That's or something. It. It's yeah, it's strippy, it's strippy. So, but yeah, turn off your Wi-Fi. turn off your phone at night. Go, just, just be, start becoming aware of it. And you know, if we do another podcast, I can really get into the different types and, and that kind of thing. Beautiful folks for episode 111 here. We're talking with Lucas Trengov again in the health industry for 15 years. That's one, five years. And a former host, or actually, are you still, are we still hosting the podcast, Quacks? Or you took a little break, or what's the ETA on that? So, yeah, you can find my podcast at quackspodcast.com, Q U A X podcast.com. Okay. And I, I finished that up uh, a couple years ago. I did 100 episodes, and then I did one more uh, a year after that. Um, but it was, it was a good journey. It was part of what I used to get my health back. And, and there's still some really good episodes on there. Some of it's getting a little dated, but, but there's some good stuff. And that's quaxpodcast.com. Yep. If you want to check it out. Yeah. The it's archive on YouTube is too. Awesome. The archive's all there. You can, they can go back and check out all the previous shows, huh? Yep. They can. Perfect. Um, awesome. That looks like it went all the way up to episode 101, almost where we're at right now. I'm just, I just pulled it up there. So we well, are on 111. So we're, right. you're, you're past it. You've, you've succeeded. <laughs> I you've, won. 
Yeah, you, you made it, bro. <laughs> no, it's not a competition like that. Look at this. Quacks podcast. Here we go, folks. Go check there this out. Are. Go check this one out. This is incredible information right here. Um, not many people do a hundred episodes deep into their own podcast. So, and look yeah. how nicely he arranged this website and everything. So quackspodcast.com to stay in the loop more with what Lucas has been involved with over the years. So thanks for sharing that. Um, what else did you really want to highlight? You know, the environmental aspect, I like that you mentioned it can be from so many different sources, right? And the yeah. fact that you don't want to just suppress it. This is like ultimate root cause medicine as naturopathic mm -hmm. doctors, we want to get to the root issue. And what's happened a lot in this field, a lot of doctors, it's almost become like green allopathy, green all allopathic medicine, where you're just hmm. throwing these uh, sub uh, stress reducers at people that, and then not taking enough effort to get to the root issue of why the stress is happening. You want to elaborate a bit more on that? It's, isn't that interesting? You're just kind of suppressing it. Treating, that's what they do almost, but with pharmaceuticals. Sure. I, I can just talk to my own experience yeah. in that if you go into a health food store, there are probably maybe three to five things in there that are really going to help you, but you don't know what those things are. And so I tried tons of different stuff. I did all the stress mitigating stuff and the things that work for everybody are environmental factors that works for everybody. Everybody can benefit by improving their environment. And that's where I, I got the biggest bang for my buck. Now, on top of that, you can do supplements and you can say, okay, you know, is this working for me? You know, I, I take blueberry pills. It helps with my blood sugar. Um, I take uh, an antifungal, you know, for some reason that gives me more endurance. So like I take an enzyme, lumbrokinase, which makes me feel good. So, I mean, like there's, there's a couple things I've found over the years that are really helpful for me. Um, but it's, it's almost always like a specific thing. And so when you're trying a supplement, you know, my rule of thumb is within two weeks to one month, that supplement should give you some type of improvement. You should see something objective that is better, meaning you're sleeping better. Uh, you have more energy during the day. And if those can go together, that's really, that's the sweet spot you're looking for. You're not looking for more energy during the day and then worse sleep yeah. at night. You're looking for more energy during, during the day, but better sleep at night. Um, if you are happier, if you're more loving, if you have better relationships, um, if you're, if you can think better, if you're smarter, you know, have these objective measurements. Um, I, I kept track of my weight, my, uh, heart rate variability, um, all of these different statistics every single day for years. I have this huge notebook with all my notes <laughs> of the different things I tried. And I know people aren't going to go that, that crazy on it. Yeah. Um, but that's how I found what worked for me and what actually improves me objectively. Uh, because a lot of people will have like a subjective experience. They'll take something and be like, Oh, I feel really good. Uh, well, okay. Maybe it's good for you, but, but give it two weeks, give it a month, see, see where it actually lands. So since you said you started off at Healthy Habit, you used to work here, correct? Yeah. Yeah, and then I've been here now six plus years involved with the store. Both That's one of our clear common uh, commonalities here that we share is the supplement industry and mm -hmm. uh, the nutraceutical world. So what would you say are some of your current heavy hitters, biggest needle movers? Again, this is for Lucas personally, folks. We're not giving yeah. medical advice here. We're not saying start taking these supplements that we're talking about or move out of your home. or No, this is we're just talking his journey his specific uh, thoughts here. What are some of your biggest needle movers that you like when it comes to supplements lately or over the years? So like I said, I, I take lumbrokinase and enzyme is really good. I take, um, I take CLA that, that seems to really react well for me. I take blueberry. Uh, I mean, there's, there's a handful of things I take, but the best thing I take, I don't know if you want to go there is rapamycin. Like, should we like, that's a prescription. Should we go there? We're talking your experience. Again, I've given multiple disclaimers here uh, okay. that it's not medical advice. I, we just want to hear your thoughts. That's the whole point of this show, information. Yeah, Absolutely, so, let's go. So rapamycin is an anti-aging drug. So it, it's, it was actually used as an anti-rejection drug. It's a drug that was found in the, I want to say 70s on Rapa Nui, which is why it's called rapamycin. That's Easter Island, which has the big, the big stone heads. Uh, they found this bacteria that produce... Um, rapamycin. And what rapamycin does is it inhibits something called mTOR. And mTOR is a signal for all of your cells. And just to bottom line it, it makes cells grow. It makes, it makes things, it's, it's anabolic in some ways. Anabolic isn't quite the right word, but that's a good way to think of it. So if you eat protein, you eat a bunch of protein, 
mTOR is going to signal to all your cells, hey, there's plentiful protein, let's grow. What rapamycin does is it inhibits mTOR, and this will inhibit your immune system. And so this is how it's been used as an anti-rejection drug. However, about in the last 10, 20 years, they figured out that using rapamycin periodically, meaning using a larger dose once every two weeks, once every month, once every one week, actually it mimics fasting in a way. Uh, without some of the downsides of fasting. So I know fasting is a very popular thing out there. Uh, people love to fast, but when you fast, it will increase your stress hormones. So you're going to get raises in adrenaline and cortisol. And so, yes, you're going to get those benefits of fasting, which is your body, you know, you're giving your guts a break and all, all the, all the benefits they talk about with fasting, but you're also going to get a spike in these stress hormones. And one thing I noticed when I was at healthy habit was people would start fasting. They'd feel great. And then they'd keep going. And it was a couple, two years later, three years later, and they started to lose muscle mass and they're starting to lose their meta metabolic efficiency. And so you can do too much fasting. What yeah. rapamycin does is it mimics fasting, but you can still eat. And so you get some of those benefits of fasting without the downsides. And so rapamycin is something I've been taking for two or three years. It is a prescription. You have to get it from a doctor, or there are some other ways that you could get it, which, uh, uh, I've put out there. If you want to, if you want to find out about those, you can go to my podcast and listen to episode 101. Uh, but that's one of the best things that, that, I mean, I've seen a lot of people take it and I've never seen anybody really, um, not benefit from it. If they don't stick with it, you'll yeah. get a 15 to 20% energy boost from just yeah. doing that. Meaning, and it's not like an energy boost where you just feel like, Oh my gosh, I, I have, I drank a Red Bull and I feel so stimulated. It's just, instead of being able to cycle, you know, for an hour, all of a sudden you can cycle for an hour and 20 minutes and you don't know why you don't feel any different, but it just expands your energy. So rapamycin is my favorite. That's, that's one thing I would love to dive deeper in and how it works and how mTOR works on a longer podcast. But right. um, if you, if somebody hasn't done the research, definitely listen to episode 101 on my podcast, if they want to find out more or just dive into it themselves. But this rapamycin is blowing up. And over the next 10 to 20 years, um, as an anti-aging drug, it, it is going to revolutionize medicine. And, and it's going to be, in some ways, it's going to be about the people who have access to it and can take it and the people who don't. And there's, yeah, it's, it's going to be a haves and a haves not situation. So uh, definitely look into that. Right. You can even just head over to Google real quick and just literally wrap a mice in health and then add the word scholar at the end and mm -hmm. just read on your own. Do read even just this first page, everything on this first page, maybe 11, 12 different articles. And it's just, there's so many studies at this point on rapamycin here. You can see here extends life and health span because it slows aging. It's from a 2014 Chinese article, medical, uh, study. So you can, yeah, keep, if, you can go deeper and deeper. If go I ahead. can just mention that the difference yeah. between lifespan and health span. So, so one thing about anti-aging is the, the, the big thing in anti-aging for a long time was calorie restriction. Everybody's right. heard of that. The thing is to really get benefits from calorie restriction, you need to start early. So if you calorie restrict a mouse, it's going to grow up and it's going to be smaller. It's, it's going to, you know, and, and these calorie restrictions are severe. It's like 30%. So this, this mouse right. is going to grow up calorie restricted and it will then live longer. It doesn't work. If you start calorie restricting later in life, yeah. you can't go to a 60 year old who's been just eating like crap the whole, their whole life and say, Hey, start calorie restricting and you'll live 10, 20, 30% longer. The cool thing about rapamycin is it works on everybody. Even if you're, you're elderly, it shows benefits. It shows life extension and it increases health span. So you right. don't want to just live longer and be miserable. You actually want to live longer and feel better. And so, yeah, it's, it's really an amazing discovery. There's actually a book by Linus Pauling, the two-time Nobel Prize winner. I know you know about Linus Pauling, Lucas, yeah. but it's called um, Live Longer, Feel Better. That's literally mm -hmm. the title of one of his, he has like 11 books, but that's one of them that I have here. Was it, um, uh, was it vitamin C? Is that what he that's, was? That's in there. But then yeah. he has like, like a whole protocol with vitamin E as well and A, it's the B complex. He talks about a lot of different ways to do it. But yes, cool. his cool. big, his biggest work was definitely on vitamin C, um, so really interesting stuff. So yeah, uh, like you I heard he went, go ahead. I, I was gonna say, I heard he went a little nutty after he got that Nobel prize. Really? <laughs> <Bro>. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Why? Why is that? I don't know. It's a whole thing. Um, there's like a study on it of like, after you get a Nobel prize, like wow. you, some, a lot of scientists just like go off the deep end into weird stuff. But, uh, it's cause yeah. I feel like, like, you know, Alex Honnold, 
professional climber. He did Free Solo. Mm-hmm. There's a documentary on National Geographic called Free Solo. Alex Honnold. Okay. He, did, he climbed El Capitan in, in Yosemite National Park with no equipment, no harness, nothing. Mm. And after that, he just kind of lost it. Like, he didn't know what else to do. It's almost like once you <laughs> conquer that biggest feat, it's like, what's next, you know? Right? I mean, can you imagine so. if you were like Armstrong and you just landed on the moon and you were right. the first one to be on the moon and you get back? Like, what, <laughs> now what? What, do you, what do you do then? You know, how do you top that? Like it's yeah. all down, it's all downhill from there, you know? So Lucas, this has been incredible, my friend for episode 111. We're going to have him back on again, folks. Don't worry. I know everyone's like, when is Lucas coming on again? <laughs> uh, this was a good little intro. Uh, we can go deeper next time, which we will. And I would check out episode 101 of the Quacks podcast, which uh, we'll share that below. What do you want to leave us with here last minute or so? What's a good take home, Lucas, before we have you on next? Yeah. Um, you know, if you're on a health journey or if you're trying to figure out how to be healthier, just remember that you are doing it to experience the best things in life. You're doing it so you can dance more, love more, have better connection, have meaningful work, good conversations. Like that is the end goal. And so that's where you're getting, that's where you're going. Don't forget that. Don't forget in your going to doctors and all that stuff that that's, uh, that that's where you're aiming. That's the that's the end. So that's what I would uh, leave people with. That's valuable. And uh, thank you again for coming on. We'll talk to you soon. No problem, brother. Thanks, Good Lucas. to talk to you.